Hey guys, Buildzoid here with another PCB analysis video for you. Today we're going to take a look at the reference PCB of the flamethrower, also known as the GTX 480. So let's take a look at this here card. Um, the VCore VRM here is a six phase design and is located right here. Um, and it's a real six phase because we got six driver FETs as well as six uh, six inductors. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's our six inductors and one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. So that's our six drivers. Uh, you may notice that there is a oddly large quantity of MOSFETs here. Uh, there's a simple reason for this. Uh, NVIDIA chose to put their two low side MOSFETs in parallel. Uh, basically, it gives you double the current throughput than if you just used one of the same MOSFET. So, uh, let's actually take a look at the MOSFETs. Now, there's one minor problem. While that I did manage to figure out what MOSFETs these are, I ca couldn't figure out how they're actually arranged. Um, so that, that's a bit problematic. Not that it really matters, it just kind of annoys me. Uh, assuming that this is, th this one's almost certainly a low side and this one's almost certainly a low side as well, the, the high side ones are a problem. So the low side MOSFETs are uh, four 925s from on semiconductor and these are rated to do 48 amps at 25 degrees. That is continuous drain current because, well, it's the low side and it's basically always going to be conducting current. So they can do 48 amps at 25 degrees. They can they derate down to 30 amps at 100 degrees. So with two of them in each phase, because they're doubled up, that gives you a total current throughput of 100, well, almost 100 amps at uh, 25 degrees and 60 amps at 100 degrees. The high side um, is either, well actually I know this one is a high side right here. So, and it looks like this one's as well. So the high side uh, MOSFET is a 49, uh, 49, 49, yeah 4945 also from on semiconductor. These are not doubled up, these are rated for 38, uh, 35 amps continuous, but since they're the high side, what we really care about is their pulse rating, and their pulse rating is 104 amps uh, for 10 microseconds at a 25 degree ambient temperature. So basically, uh, there are no real worries about blowing out the high side. It's it's completely fine. Like compared to the low side, it it, it matches up the current ratings. Now, uh, the problem here is that the stock current draw of a flamethrower is around 270 amps. Well, somewhere around 270, not exactly. It's, it might be a little less, a little more, depending on how much current is uh, uh, being used up by the GDDR5. So, Basically, um, with the VRM at 100 degrees, uh, you know, case temperature on the MOSFETs, uh, you can push 360 amps through the whole thing. Uh, if you lower the temperature, you can obviously push more. But if it's if it's at 100 degrees because you're using the stock cooler of the flamethrower, then you're gonna you're gonna run into serious issues because the stock voltage for a GTX 480 is around a volt, uh, and basically that means if you give it a 20% uh, voltage increase, you'll see a, which is just 1.2 volts, you'll see a roughly 20% current draw increase, and then you start seeing major issues because you'll be very close to the limit of the current capabilities of this here VRM, and that could be a fire. Uh, very, very quickly. So, uh, especially once you also increase GPU frequency, which further increases the current draw, yes, you will pretty much for sure set this VRM on fire if you give the card over 1.2 volts and overclock it 
on the stock cooler. If you actually do something about the VRM cooling and get the VRM temperatures down to around the 70s, uh, you could probably push 1.2 volts just fine. But getting the VRM down into the 70s will be pretty complicated uh, unless you get some kind of, like, unless you build some kind of heatsink for it, specifically for the VRM. So that's the core voltage taken care of. Uh, let's take a look at the memory. So the memory VRM is located right here, right above the core voltage. It is made up of the same high side and low side MOSFETs. We have a high side, uh, high side FET here. That's the 4945, and then the low side MOSFET is the 4925. So again, 35 amp strain and uh, 48 amp strain. Uh, this is for the GDDR5. There's really no concerns here with this. Uh, um, dying. So r regardless, basically, of operating temperature, plus it's a two-phase design, so again, even fewer concerns. Now, uh, that sort of covers everything on this side of the PCB. Um, let's take a... other than the fact that there's these gaping holes right here, and those are basically just fan cutouts. So yeah, you can actually just put giant holes in your PCBs, um, which was basically absolutely necessary on this card because without those cutouts, there wouldn't be enough airflow to even keep the card at the very inadequate temperatures that it normally runs at of 96 degrees core temperature and well over 100 on the VRM. So... Yeah, very, very hard to cool, but if you can cool this, this PCB is not actually completely garbage, uh, which I'm kind of surprised by. But then again, I give NVIDIA a little bit too much flack, probably. So now let's move on to the volt modding, which requires going to look at the back of the PCB of this card. So let's see if paint will cooperate this time. Boom. And here we got the back of the PCB of the 480. So we see the cutouts again. Uh, and we also get to see the six-phase voltage controller, which is located right here. This is a Chill CHL8266, and it's a six-phase voltage controller. It doesn't provide any more phases than that. We also can see a UPI uh, controller up here, and that will be doing the memory voltage. And I forgot to look up a data sheet for that, so 6210... Oh, that's not going to be fun. Oh, well. So, um, the chill voltage controller does have vid pins, so that means you can actually control it with a dip switch using a different kind of volt mod than uh, what I usually do with the potentiometer. I'm going to highlight the pins for you, but I'm not going to explain how to do the mod. I'm going to explain that in a different video how those work. And let me just get the data sheet, and there we go. So, the vid pins on the Chill 82, uh, 8266 is, the, uh, well, this is pin 1, yep, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, 1, 2, 3, and 4 seem to be leading into these resistors right here. Number 5 needs to be traced out to somewhere else. I'm going to explain how to do this vault mod in a different video. Uh, because I've never done it, so I need to actually check how to do the mod. Uh, I know the theory of it, but right now I'm just not 100% about, certain about the details. Uh, if you want to, to do your volt mod the old-fashioned way, with a um, potentiometer uh, hooked up to the voltage, uh, you know, the voltage sense pin and the uh, and to ground, then what you need to go do is mod. Give me a second. All right, so one, two, three, four. Yep. This pin right here, and obviously do the usual, trace it out, figure out where it goes. It should go to one of these two, and then basically just pull it to ground through a potentiometer that is proportional to the resistance you measure uh, between this pin and ground. Uh, and I, there's a video on the YouTube channel detailing what kind of proportions you should actually do. So that's that for core voltage, uh, though I will point out that you should have full uh, software voltage control 
available through Afterburner. And if Afterburner doesn't do it, then Afterburner Extreme should certainly do it. If you want Afterburner Extreme, last I heard, you need to go ask MSI for it because it's extreme and they don't really trust people with it. So, yeah, that's that. So now let's take a look at memory voltage. Uh, which is controlled by a UP6210A6. Well, that's that's great. Let's see if this even exists on Google. It should. It's it, it's old enough, so I'm hoping I can find it. X2010. Well, that didn't work at all. You don't really want. Let's see. Well, it. Eh, eh, am I lucky? Please. Oh, we're in luck. It does exist. Now, if I could get this data sheet in a size that is actually re legible, that would be amazing. Um, let's see. Oh, it's download. Oh, well. One more for my collect. Oh, you've got to be joking. It's not just... Why isn't it just a PDF? Uh, well, this, this is freaking lovely. Okay, there we go. VRAF, RAFIN, VID... Oh, uh, this is fun. Well, so it is indeed two. It's a. It is indeed a two-phase voltage controller, and it does, you know, take care of the memory, and it seems to have its own inbuilt drivers. Yep, yep, it does. So it has its own drivers, uh, you know, driver MOSFETs built into it, which is why we didn't see any on this side or the other side of the PCB. Um, and, okay, I found it. Uh, and the pin you need to mod on this to get voltage control is... Give me a second. Well, that's fun. That diagram sucks. Let's see. I'll try scroll through this and hopefully I'll find a better diagram of this thing. And nope. I love data sheets. I really love data sheets. They're not standardized, so, you know, labels and everything are all over the place. That's the last pin of some row. Not one, two, three. So it should be... Oh my god, this is so messed up. The orientation of... Oh no. Well. So... This sucks. So I found the data sheet. And I can't figure out where the pin is. Because... The data sheet, the way, like, the orientation is in it, I can't... I mean, if if we go by this arrow, then it should be this pin. That should be the pin that, you know, you... Sorry, there we go. You measure this from here to ground. Well, first you would, of course, trace it out to something that you can actually solder to. But basically, you measure that to ground, and then you set your potentiometer, and that should give you... Um, memory voltage control uh, or it might destroy your card if I misread the data sheet I'm really not happy with this 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 is not good um, it should be that one unless I don't know how to read data sheets and PCB uh, you know the PCB symbols then uh, then this should be correct but if I if I'm wrong then your cards probably gonna end up dead so yeah, proceed with extreme caution, because this 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 pin. Well, it either does what I says it does, and I'm I'm great. And if it doesn't, well, then your card's probably gonna catch on fire. Um. 
So yeah, I'm surprised though. Well, yeah, and that that's sort of everything. So sorry about just looking up a data sheet in the middle of the video and uh, unintentionally making you stare at the screen longer while listening to me mumble random crap. Uh, but yeah, that, that's all there is to the GTX 480. Um, I'm actually pretty surprised with the quality of the PCB. Uh, if you do keep it cool, you can actually push it quite far. You can certainly vault mod the memory on the on, on just the stock, um, uh, j just like the stock cooler. That should be fine. Uh, though I, I'm not quite sure how bad the thermals on a GTX 480 are. I never really paid it too much attention to the card. So, yeah, uh, that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Or got dumber. That also works. And uh, like, share, subscribe. And do please consider donating. Because, well, then I could do something other than paint videos. Uh, and this will be the last video before I get an RX 480. I hope. I really hope. So yeah, uh, that's that. And see you next time.